It used to be you could walk into this site at all hours of daylight. Now you have to think about the tides. You can't be here at a high tide uh, without a boat. Depending on what time of year and, and what the tide is doing, you could drive by Lekwa Island and just see it as a big mud pit. It's not a mud pit. It's a salmon nursery, among many other things. I grew up right in this community. I went to Lekwe Island before the project and I continue to go there afterwards as just a guy in the community. I take my kids there and we'll hop in the kayak and paddle around. Um, it's just a fun place we like to go. It just felt really important to me that we did this project right. Lekwe Island, uh, hundreds of years ago, was a, an intertidal place uh, where Skagit Bay and Port Susan Bay met that held salt marsh habitat that was really valuable for shorebirds, waterfowl, and salmon. In the late 1800s, settlers built a perimeter dike around Lekwe Island and drained it, and it became farmland for over 100 years. And then those families of the settlers began selling properties uh, to my agency, Department of Fish and Wildlife. And once we owned the entirety of the island, we made the decision to remove those dikes and restore it back to the tides. The people who passed by Lekwe Island on their way to and from work every day noticed a really big change. Previous to 2019, they would have noticed dry land farm fields. And now they're noticing uh, at high tide, there's water right up against the highway. For some people, that was cause for a celebration. For others, I think they felt a sense of loss, like they were sacrificing something. And a lot of times I knew those people personally. I probably first came to Lekwe about 15 years ago doing bird photography. It was one of the best places in the world to take pictures of short-eared owl. But it has changed a lot. I was concerned that I would be losing, you know, something that was very special. It was important to restore Lekwe Island uh, to the tides, to estuary habitat, because so much of that type of habitat has been lost. When we first saw salmon actually returning to Lekwe Island in over 100 years, that was, that was so exciting. It was quite the moment. It's important to me that we communicate those results really well so that people can see that they didn't sacrifice something for nothing. There was a, um, a moment where I kind of changed my perspective. The switch that happened for me was recognizing that restoring Lekwe fully to a saltwater marsh was restoring things back to the way that things have been for thousands of years. I started feeling good about that. So even though you knew something, you can gain something too. My uh, great great grandparents, they came here in 1875. I've known of people that have been critical of the project and say they don't like what it is. And I'd say, well, have you ever parked your car down there and gone for a walk? Tree. 
when Linda and I are walking out on Lakeway Island, I think we're truly blessed to be able to, to uh, see it, to share it with other people. I mean, it's not just locked away as a little, my own little private treasure. I like seeing how happy people generally are when they're on the site. I've never come across a person yet who's on Lakeway Island walking on the berm that's in a bad mood. If we're serious about living in a place that has healthy salmon runs, places to just go and experience a healthy ecosystem, we have to restore important landscapes at a scale that really means something. When I see a, a big, difficult project like Lekwe Island happen, um, it just makes me really hopeful that we can actually make a difference.